I think that's probably one thing that I uh, sort of learned, you know, through my time there, really. Interesting too, because um, it's a pretty rare boy that you get, um, be it a day boy or a hostel boy, that manages to balance sport with academic achievement. Now, I know the hostel environment, it can be pretty vicious, and they're very single-minded with regard to their, uh, the sport. Uh, the fact that you were proximate Kesset of the school as well is testament to the fact that you're either really, really clever, or you really, really work hard, or I'm going for maybe both. <laughs> And how did you manage yeah, it with that? Yeah, you know, yeah. But no, I think uh, you're right in the hostel. Um, I certainly, I think that probably the thing that uh, I always pride myself on, whether it be a sport or, or uh, when I really came to the schoolwork, uh, was working hard. And, um, and I was probably quite lucky that uh, you know things sort of clicked a little bit. But you know, if you, I think if I look at it in a, in a, in a hostel situation. If it, all you did was uh, just work hard at school, you know, you'd you come feel a stick from your mates, as you can imagine. But you're probably lucky I you did okay at sport that I sort of balanced things out a wee bit. But did any of that rub off on any of your mates? Oh, did like, they think, oh, look, he's doing, I'll oh, work hard myself academically. Um, oh, I don't know. I, don't know. I think the answer is no, there, isn't it? <laughs> 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 no, I'm not going to say that you're doing what you're doing. And more people tell you can't do it, more and more and more and more. That's something that. Uh, well, it's worked well for you so far. Just saying, we fella. Um, now, big question, uh, and it's one that I've wondered myself, being uh, an Otago boy, head of Otago Boys High School. Why did you go to Canterbury? <laughs> Did we just not do it as well as we should have administratively at Otago Rugby at the time? Because they were, they were watching you, they knew, and they pounced. Was it that simple? Uh, no, I actually, it was, it was a pretty tough decision in the end. You think you made the right one? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just saying. Uh, uh, However, it was me. Yeah, I think I probably did. But, uh, <laughs> knows what would happen otherwise, but I think what, what happened, I, I, I guess I came from a farming background and, and I always had this idea of what I was going to do and I, you know, I always wanted to be a farmer, effectively, that was my uh, thing I'd grown up wanting to be. And, um... oh, I sort of remember at the time having a lot of people give me advice and you know and stuff and, and, and I didn't know who to listen to or, or what, what to actually do and uh, to be honest rugby wasn't even on the radar for me, it was, um, yep, I wanted to, to be successful but it was never a career option or anything like that and, and it sort of, I left it uh, sort of time went on and then the rugby did become a little bit of a, there's a scholarship up in, in uh, at Lincoln so that sort of worked in well with where I was attending on going and then the rugby thing sort of became a bit of a, an incentive to stay here and, and in the end, you know, you think you put a lot of time in making decisions, it just boiled down to I didn't make a decision and ended up just carrying on with what I was going to do. So um, <laughs> there, there was no real uh, reason, it was just I, I think something I'd always planned to do and, and when you started getting other options I sort of, um, I actually didn't know what, what was the right one so I just decided on one and, uh, and just sort of make the most of that. Okay, so I'll ask a, a sort of parenty type question here, so pretend I'm your mother. Um, so rugby's went quite well for you so far, son. You've done okay, but what are you going to do when you grow up? <laughs> it doesn't sound like you're that good at making decisions. Really? Seriously, in regard to that question, is you know through through as being a professional rugby player, you know you, was, you know there's an end coming, and uh, and I remember when I was a bit younger, you know, I used to get worried about it. You know, what happens if I don't if I get injured tomorrow or I never get to play a game? What am I actually going to do? And um, I think as time's gone on, you know, until you're in those situations, it's quite hard to actually say this is exactly where I'm going because I had friends that. Uh, you know, they're the same age as me, they still don't know either, so... Um, no, that doesn't, sorry, that's no excuse. But, uh, okay, I'm pulling the parent card again, that's no excuse, son. 
What, what I'm trying to say is that uh, I think uh, you get into that situation, and I think the biggest thing I've uh, tried to do is, is you know, we're lucky to get to meet a lot of people in different uh, different walks of life, different uh, things that, you know, just have the right people to speak to when you actually need to make a decision rather than sort of look hypothetically. I think well, we'd like to mention Warren Alcock here, obviously, he's Richie's manager, good man. And get him a list of what I'm not allowed to discuss. There wasn't much. Actually, that's not true. There wasn't much on that list. Well, I, I came back to you and said, you don't, uh, just don't talk about women. I <laughs> <laughs> would be here all night talking about them. Yeah, I'm not helping you with your issues, Richie. <laughs> 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 Richie, uh, it's been an absolute privilege and pleasure to have you walking amongst us tonight. Um, you are just one of the boys in this room. There are some amazing achievements from everybody here. You are just one, but you're a very special one. Richie McCord, it's been a pleasure. Thank you.